why hello booktube and welcome to Rockin' Reviews. Hi booktube, I want to begin this video by telling you a story about Mervyn Peak. Mervyn Peak is an author, a drawer, an illustrator, a painter, a reporter, a jack of all trades. So Mervyn and his wife Maeve booked a room in a hotel and were trying to sleep when all of a sudden they heard some noises coming from downstairs. Uh, it was some loud stomping and some strange noises that they couldn't quite identify. Now, Mervyn, being the ingenious person that he is, he moved the rug in the room and discovered a trap door. Now only Mervyn could discover a trap door uh, in a room that didn't actually belong to him. Um, and he opened the door and looked down below, and his wife and him discovered that a circus had moved into the room below them. Uh, so, <laughs> Mervyn and his wife were up all night feeding buns to an elephant, which was the source of the stomping and strange noises that they could now identify. So, I think that story encapsulates the fun and adventure and architecture that Mervyn Peak has written so very well in his Gourmet Gas trilogy. So this past month I read Titus Grown, the first book in this series published in 1946 after Mervyn Peak had spent some time as a war painter. So what is Titus Grown about? Well basically there's this castle Gormenghast. And it's populated by a cast of superbly strange characters. Seriously, there are no normal people in this castle. There is also no central figure. We follow a wide array of characters. The novel is really only called Titus Grown, who is the son of Lord Sepulchcrave, the 76th Earl of Gormenghast, because the events of the novel occur around the time of his birth. Some more prominent characters that I want to talk about, i.e. the ones I loved reading about the most, include Lord Sepulchcrave, who was a very kind of brooding loner who was obsessed with reading and knowledge. And he went absolutely crazy when his library was burnt to the ground. Um, so I think all of us on booktube can actually relate to that character very well. The next character I would just want to mention is Fuchsia Grown, who is almost literally the wild teenage daughter of um, Lord Spulchgrave. Uh, she has wild hair, she writes on her bedroom walls and draws on them, and has this own private attic that is full of all the debris and cast sauce from the rest of the castle. And the last character is Steerpike, who is a social climber who is willing to lie and murder his way into the inner circle of the grown family. So. The only thing I can really say about this novel is that the writing is superb. I feel like I have found my kindred um, in Mervyn Peake um, in that he is what I am aspiring to write like. The way he has with words is the magical element in this novel. Um, it, is, it is just beyond um, everything I expected. So I wanted to read a sample of his writing. And this is describing Lord Spulchgrave. This evening, as he sat silently in the velvet back chair, his mind had turned to many subjects like a black craft, that though it steers through many waters, has always beneath it a deathly image reflected among the waves. Philosophers and the poetry of death the meaning of the stars and the nature of those dreams that haunted him when in those coral hours before the dawn the laudanum built for him within his skull a tallow-colored world of ghastly beauty. 
I was trying to look up how other people described his writing and I found this really, really beautiful example on Goodreads written by one Kyle without a last name here. <clears throat> um, so for lack of better words of my own, I'm going to read his um, description of Peake's writing. Mervyn Peake was like a dog trainer for words. Stay with me here. He had a clear vision of what he wanted to happen, and the words obeyed with gleeful obedience. Many people can power language into doing what it wants, and making language submit to their whims. But what makes Mervyn Peake such a master is that he never has to resort to such shallowness. He isn't the Caesar Milan of words, where he teaches the words who the boss is and bullies them into submission. He treats his words with respect. He loves them and he cares for them. He tolerates no abusive language. Instead, he allows language to go free and off-leash. He lets language run about, jump up with playful abandon, and lick people's faces. Language to peak should be used for its own sake and for its own happiness. It is a living, breathing, feeling thing. We readers are simply lucky enough to observe it at play from time to time. And when we do, we are able to draw beautiful stories and insights into the human heart and mind. So if you are looking for a novel that just encapsulates the love of language and words and whose only magical element in this fantasy novel is actually the, the way the author has with words, then I strongly suggest that you read Titus Grown. And remember to keep on reading!